Hey everyone, Bryce Greenleaf here, your real estate agent with Skyline Properties in the greater Seattle area. So today I wanted to talk about buying a home in a competitive market. Many of you know right now it's really competitive for buyers. It's a great time because of interest rates, but inventory is really low and the buyer pool is really large. So it is competitive on a lot of these homes, multiple offers on almost every single home that's priced at least halfway decently. So I'm gonna jump into kind of some top things that you can do to put yourself in the best position to succeed when putting offers in on homes. So the first thing that you should do is to make sure you save a little bit of cash. Now, while it's true, you can buy a home with zero down through down payment assistance, which I've covered on many different videos before, you do still need some cash available for a multitude of other things. There are some closing costs that you may have to pay. Now, we can negotiate the seller to pay for these as well. And I've had this happen multiple times, still here in 2020, even though it's really competitive, I've still got a lot of my buyers, their closing costs paid for. But aside from the closing costs, you you do have to put down what's called an earnest money deposit. And an earnest money deposit shows the seller that you're making a good faith effort on their home and the larger your deposit, the stronger your offer looks. So we'd like to recommend about 1% for this deposit. So if you're buying a $400,000 house, we recommend that you put at least $4,000 down for that earnest money. Now again, I've had clients get their offers accepted with less than that, but that's a good rule to shoot for. So you do want some cash available for that. Like I said, it's a deposit, it's not a fee, so it will get refunded to you, um, but it's really good to have some cash saved up in order to put yourself in the best position. Now, the second thing you need to do is to make sure you get connected to a real estate agent that knows what they're doing and that's experienced with putting in offers for buyers in this market. So there are a lot of things that I do within the offers that I submit for my clients. If the home they're interested in already has five to 10 other offers on it, there are some things that we're gonna do to make our offer stronger than those other offers. Some different things that I can include in the offer and manipulate within the offer to make the offer look stronger and make you more competitive against those other buyers. So if you are thinking about buying a home and you don't already have a real estate agent that you're going to use, reach out to me. Uh, I'd be more than happy to help you out through the process here in 2021. So along with this, number three that you need to do is you need to use a reputable mortgage lender. Now I have somebody that you can use if you don't already know somebody, but when you talk to real estate agents, we all have some lenders that we recommend you don't use. Just like in any field, there are some that are better at their job than others. So there are some lenders that I have had to work with that I wish I wouldn't had to because they did not do a good job servicing my client and servicing our transaction to give the seller confidence that we could actually close on the transaction. So having a good lender is vital when putting in an offer. Now, another thing that can really help you out is to be timely. So when you're looking at homes, oftentimes you'll see that homes have an offer review date. They might put the home on the market on a Thursday or a Friday, and they might not be looking at offers until that following Monday. That's very common to happen. But sometimes you'll see homes go on the market and they don't have these offer review dates, meaning they are just taking offers as soon as they come in. So in a market like this, where it's really competitive, oftentimes it can help you immensely if you're the first or second second person in and you get that offer in ASAP. I've had multiple deals where we saw the home come on the market. They did not have an offer review date. We went and saw that home an hour or two later, put in an offer immediately and put a deadline on that offer that they needed to respond to us by that night. This gives us the opportunity to wean out any other buyers that may have seen it in the following days and put pressure on that seller to accept our offer. Now, along with that, you still need to submit a strong offer. You're not gonna be able to lowball them in a market like this. You've gotta submit a strong offer, but being quick and timely can often make that big difference for you in getting that home. Now, the next one, when we're submitting an offer, I'm gonna have you include a seller love letter. Now, what this is, is just a letter that you write to the seller to tell them a little bit about yourselves and about why you love that home. You wanna strike an emotional chord with that seller. Some sellers make decisions purely logically and some make them partially or fully on emotions. If they see a buyer that they're really excited about, somebody that they'd really like to take care of their home that they've had for however many years they've owned that home and they see this buyer that they're just excited about, they may be more willing to accept your offer even if it's weaker than some of the other offers they have in hand. I've had that happen multiple times where my buyers have got their offers accepted when our offer was a little bit weaker in terms of the purchase price or whatever the case is but that seller still accepted our offer because they were excited about working with us. Now, the last one here that you should consider is regarding inspections. Now, some buyers will waive inspections when they're putting an offer on a house. I never ever recommend that my buyers do that because you wanna know everything about that house before you buy it. You wanna know what's in the crawl space and in the attic and anything the inspector can find. You don't wanna get into the home 
uh, without an inspection and then realize after you own the home, you've got a 10 to $20,000 bill, something that you need to fix that you weren't aware of. Now, along with this, when you put in an inspection contingency in your offer, it makes it look a little bit weaker because it gives you the opportunity to back out of the transaction. So sellers love to see offers that don't have inspection contingencies. So the way around this without having to waive your inspection is to do a pre-inspection. And so before you put the offer in, you'll have the inspector actually go out to the house and do an inspection before we ever work up any offer. That way, you know what's up with the house, you know any issues that are with it. So if you're still comfortable making the offer, you can now make the offer without having it be contingent on that inspection and it looks a lot stronger to the seller. Another thing that you can do with inspections, if we don't have time to do a pre-inspection, if we've got to get that offer in immediately, you can do what we call a pass-fail inspection basically just telling the seller that you're not gonna ask them for any repairs after you do the inspection. The only purposes that you're doing it for is to look out for any large items that would make you not wanna purchase the home. So if you found a large item, you could back out of the transaction. Otherwise, you would move on and you would not be requesting the seller fix anything on the house. So those are some good tips to succeed in a competitive market. Like I said, there's multiple offers on most homes right now, and I expect that to be the case in 2021. This isn't to discourage you too much from going out and looking for a home, shopping for that first home for yourself. All of my buyers in 2020 were able to get into homes. I didn't have a single buyer back out because they were discouraged, because they were losing out on offers or anything like that. It is very possible. You just, like I said, you need to get aligned with a real estate agent that knows what they're doing and can do a good job in looking out for your best interests and getting you into a home. So if you are looking to buy a home in the near future in King or Snohomish County, definitely let me know. You can contact me here at my number on the screen, or you can direct message me on whatever platform you're watching this, and I'd be more than happy to help you out. All right, I'll see you on the next video.